Hey y'all, Dan of the Artist here. A little more low key tonight, as I have this heart bomb strapped to my chest. Wired up and everything. Yeah, so I have this heart monitor on for the next two days, and uh, you know, no, nothing to be scared of, just a little complication that I have to keep track of. But with this near death experience, I've happened to think a little bit more about my mortality, and more importantly, memories. And what better way to look back at our memories than to look back at Sonic the Hedgehog over here. This guy has been with me basically my whole life. I feel like it's about time I tell some unsung stories before they become lost media after I die. And so, today, to end the first week of Sonic Month forever, we're gonna look back at some of my earliest memories with Sonic the Hedgehog. Growing up in the early 2000s, there were a few constants in your life. Dunkaroos, cool toys in your cereal box, Shrek merchandise, and trips to the video store, baby. And that's where we're gonna start today's episode. This right here is a VHS. For those of you who are not so inclined with relics of the past, this in specific was Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Racer. This is not my favorite one of Sonic memorabilia, but basically it's the one with Sally Acorn. The one where they're freedom fighters, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog. The funny thing is, this is the copy that I would have rented from my video store. It happens that I work at a thrift store where we get things donated, and sometimes there are things that came from the video store either when it went out of business or when they made the switch from VHSs to DVDs which is the other facet of Sonic Media that I grew up with. Some of my most cherished memories of my young life was coming home from a trip into town with a bag of Wendy's, chicken nuggets with the, the round sweet and sour sauce that they used to have, rented a VHS of the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. This, personally, out of the 90s cartoon series, was my favorite one. It was just good. Saturday morning cartoon fun. You had the Sonic Says segment where he tells you to not smoke cigarettes or touch strangers. And uh, I was fortunate that I worked at a video store, not an actual video store, but a, a more like a record store. And we were able to order in basically any cartoon that we wanted. And one of these was The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, the collector's edition set volume one and two. Now there are like apparently five seasons of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. so. This doesn't even touch on that. I don't even think you can actually get them in seasons as you would with uh, the next show that we'll look at. But uh, a couple years later at the thrift store that I work at, we also got the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Robotnik Strikes Back. There's probably gonna be some overlap with episodes, but the fact of the matter is, it is really cool to own these in a physical format because these were a core part of my childhood. And I remember with the advent of YouTube, trying to look up episodes of these and, and looking on wikis to find the numbered episodes and see if I could find like a download. That never went well, but I now am the owner of these. On the other side of the coin though, we had what was existing at the time, what was new and fresh and fucking way past cool, Sonic X. Sonic X, my beloved. Now this show, looking back, has not aged all that well, however, Man, it was fucking sweet to be able to see some of your favorite moments from the adventure series and then completely new original content in the Metarex series that just blew your fucking mind as a kid. And it was so cool and gotta go fast and the music was rocking and the, the production value and, and the stakes felt so much higher than in something even like Sad I Am where it was more like a Saturday morning cartoon and yeah, it was episodic. The stakes didn't feel that high. This was an ongoing plot that was narratively sticking to the same thing. Changed over time, but the fact was you had the New World and the Adventure Saga, where, you know, it starts them off in this whole isekai thing, basically, where they're fish out of water, they meet Chris Thorndike, and uh, they go from there. But then you get the Adventure Saga, and you get to go through those plot points, and then the Metarex is its completely own different thing with original characters and all that stuff. But once again, I got this from my work at HMV, and I'm really glad to have them, even though now it's not as cool because they are on almost every streaming platform. You can watch it for free on Tubi. Same actually goes for Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I would have killed for Tubi in grade six, dude. The first time I ever interacted with a Sonic game, however, 
was when my uncle had come over one night for a GameCube night and brought over a couple of his games. And I think you can get to where I'm getting at here. One of them was Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This game is getting its own video, so I wouldn't worry too much about getting into depth with what I love about this game and how fortunate I was to enjoy it in its prime. With that first memory that I can remember with Sonic Adventure 2, I vividly remember my uncle coming home, having the game, playing it with my older brother, and they're going through like the shadow levels and whatever else, and I remember specifically we had pirate cookies, we had some drinks, and we had mandarin oranges. And I was trying to watch them play. They wouldn't let me play. They had supreme authority over the TV. Now y'all can have supreme authority over these nuts because I own this game and it's mine now. I won in the long run, you bastards. But as I watched them play, I was eating an orange and I started choking. And they sat there and did not pay any attention to me. They were enthralled in shadow, which Honestly, can you blame them? And I remember my mom having to like help me with choking and then getting really pissed off at them. Uh, and rightfully so, but I mean like, if for Sonic Adventure 2, I'd probably let my brother die on an orange too. Learn to swallow, bitch. But yeah, I won in the long con. Uh, not only did I live through that experience, uh, I own the game now, so uh, my uncle and my older brother can both suck my dick. I will never forget that night. I will, I'll never, ever. That is the power of Sonic, baby. This actually wasn't my first Sonic game. It was the first one that I experienced, but it wasn't my first Sonic game. No, my first Sonic game came in the form of 2003's Sonic Heroes. This one was a cool one. I had been flipping through different babysitters over a myriad of however months. No, it was my third babysitter that I had gone through in my youngest years of elementary school. And they had a PS2, an N64, and uh, a couple other consoles. But on their PS2, they had one game that I had never seen before. And they were playing it one day when I came in. I had always never touched their PS2. Didn't interest me. Wasn't my sort of thing. And it wasn't until, <laughs> it was the one thing that got me off of Paper Mario, which was the game that I played religiously on their N64 upstairs. I remember one day we went downstairs, they were playing and I was like, ah, I'll go say hi and play with them or whatever. And they were playing a Sonic game. And I just remember seeing the menu of them choosing which story to do. And I think they had chose the Rose campaign, probably because it was the easiest. But it was mind boggling that there was a new Sonic game. Mind you, a new Sonic game that wasn't all that new. It was probably, at the time, I guess a year or so old. It was 2005, maybe 2004. I can't remember. There's no timestamp for these days. But this, I needed this. And I remember asking and begging my mom for what felt like an eternity, just saying, Mom, please, can I get Sonic Heroes? Please, please, I want Sonic Heroes, please. And I have to imagine it was 2006, because that was the year she had gone to Trinidad. And if I'm getting all my timelines right, I remember she was planning on this trip, she was going on this trip, getting prepared for it, and she said, I will get you Sonic Heroes before I leave. And she was just about to leave, and I just remember it was nighttime, may have been morning even, who knows? It was dark out, it's Canada. In the fall slash winter, it's dark. Right before she left, she handed me Sonic Heroes. Man. Sucks that I don't like this game anymore. Yeah, this game has definitely lost its luster for me. I don't really have the same rose-tinted glasses that I did in like middle school even. It just doesn't hit the same. Playing through the campaigns four times over isn't that fun to me, even with their small differences. And I think just to get to that final battle with some amazing boss music, it just doesn't do it for me. And for that, I'm a little sad. It also has some water damage because of a very unfortunate thing that happened about five years ago. We don't talk about that. But Sonic Heroes was realistically my first Sonic game that I owned until about probably only a year or two later when I finally got Sonic Adventure 2 with our Wii. I remember one day, I think I was probably in kindergarten, I was at home. I remember receiving a phone call from my mom. She was at a garage sale and asked me if I wanted a Sonic teddy bear or a Sonic stuffy, whatever you would call it. And I just remember there was no way I was ever gonna say no to that. So she goes, all right, I'm gonna get it for you. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I just was like, oh man, what if she doesn't? <laughs> um, but she did obviously, and she came home and the wait felt like forever. And now it feels like forever ago. That same stuffy teddy bear 
plushy, whatever you want to call it, is this same one right here. Nowadays, he's my little Sonic. But back in the day, I used to call him Baby Sonic. This was the classic or older design. So to me, he was always just Baby Sonic. And Baby Sonic has been with me everywhere. I took him to Trinidad when I went to Trinidad. I took him to Disneyland, Disney World. When I moved to Vancouver as an adult, motherfucker still stuck with me. I remember one time I put sticky tack all over his eyeball. No reason, just weird ADHD child things. But yeah, this is my Sonic stuffy. Baby Sonic, he stays with me and I keep him anywhere I go. Before I get into the random bullshit that I used to do as a kid, there is one more thing that I will take more time to talk about in another video, but uh, I also am a proud owner of Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie on VHS. It's a cool one, but it'll have its own time to shine later this month. Now, just a forewarning, this is probably the stupidest, most brain rot, degenerate, dumb, cringe, baby shit that I will ever talk about on this channel with genuinity, if that's even a word. And it has to do with playing on the playground as Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, if you don't mind, I'm actually gonna read this verbatim from what I wrote as I wrote it so thoroughly and so specifically, I don't want to miss a single thing. And I also don't want to take a million takes. So, listen to this. I used to formulate a giant group of friends and classmates to play Sonic on the playground. Now, I was always Sonic. That has to be known. But it was wild some of the nonsensical scenarios we'd make up every day at recess. Sometimes we'd have new kids join us. And I still know them and have them on social media. I see Shoddy post the IG st <laughs> I, I see Shadi post a story on IG, I bite my lip. Fuck, girl, you used to be Amy Rose. Sheesh. If there's one moment I can take away, one was when my best friend and I got into one of the only arguments we ever had, and that was of who the bigger Sonic fan was. But that shit sink in. I remember him being like, well, <laughs> you're more of a Mario guy. Motherfucker, you take that back! I remember him crying and he still had like pasta sauce on his face because it was recess just after lunch. It was like that image of sad Christmas Spongebob but with meat sauce on his cheeks. The image lives rent free in my head even in my 20s. I literally put a smiley face. <laughs> the ironic thing is I, I wrote that down but I didn't actually have another memory. The only thing that I can really think of was exactly who played with us which once again yeah, I still know them, and I still think about it. And I'm like, I remember you, you motherfucker, you were Blaze the Cat. Otherwise, I mean, the rest is kind of history. When I look back at this franchise and all that I've kind of grown to know and, and grown to gain, I think the earliest memories are always going to be those first shows that we had, imaginary bullshit that we had on the playground, and some of my plushies. But a lot of these I will go deeper in depth with in due time, but I kind of had to get some of those stories out of the way. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Speaking of eyes, tomorrow we're going to be talking about Sonic's weirdest part of his character design, his eyes. Eye? I don't know. It's a weird one. I'll see you then. I'll see you then. <laughs>